As Singapore's Transport Minister says, the Transport Safety Investigation Bureau has obtained data recorded from the Singapore Airlines flight SQ321. Mr Chi Hong Tat was updating reporters on the sidelines of a business event on investigations into Tuesday's extreme turbulence event. We have a team that went to Bangkok and they have obtained the um, data from the cockpit voice recorder and also the flight data recorder. And they are going through the data from these two recorders now to be able to ascertain what happened during those moments. So we await their investigation findings to understand uh, what happened during that time. Well, he also commended the flight crew for their professionalism and dedication, even though they themselves were hurt. Despite the crew members themselves getting injured in the process, they continue to look after the passengers and to help the passengers. So truly appreciative and grateful to all our crew members for their dedication and their professionalism. I must also thank our friends from Thailand, the Thai authorities, the doctors and nurses uh, from the hospitals uh, for their help evacuating the affected passengers and crew, uh, giving them medical treatment, facilitating their return home. Singapore Airlines, meanwhile, has altered at least one flight route and tweaked its in-flight seatbelt sign policies following the SQ321 flight, which was hit by severe turbulence. Now, the airline said it is adopting a more cautious approach to turbulence after the incident on Tuesday left one passenger dead and dozens others injured. Among them, Singapore Airlines decided to stop serving meals when the seatbelt sign is turned on. The SQ321 aircraft remains parked on the tarmac at Bangkok's Suwanabum Airport. 44 passengers and two crew members are still hospitalised in Bangkok. Hospital officials say some 20 passengers are in intensive care. Among those receiving treatment, 22 have spinal cord injuries, six have head injuries. A hospital official says there are no life-threatening cases. For more now, CNA's May Wong joins us live from the Samitiwe Sinakaren Hospital in Bangkok. Uh, May, you've been speaking with uh, the loved ones of those who were injured. Um, how are they faring? Well, injuries of the victims range from mild ones like concussion, bruises and cuts to more severe ones such as spinal, spinal cord, as well as skull fractures. And some of them are also facing paralysis. Now, whether or not these paralysis are going to be permanent, that's something to be determined later. I spoke to a family member earlier who's been here for three days, flown in from Malaysia, and actually recounted the fact that one of the victims is now lying in bed, bed bound, and cannot be moved because of the seriousness of the injury. Yet another has got a brace that's been already attached and also confined to the bed and will have to put on that brace for at least a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And she also told me that her brother and sister-in-law were on that plane as well and our victims confined in this hospital right now. They were thrown out of their seats, did not have time to prepare to put on their seat belts because at that time, they didn't have their seatbelts on, so they were really hoisted into the air in that particular incident. And the sister-in-law is of concern. Why? Because she is actually pregnant, two months pregnant. And initially, she did not want to take any drugs and did not want to have any injections because she didn't want to affect the baby. Um, at this moment, we're unclear what the health of the baby is, but apparently it seems to be stable and well. The sister-in-law has undergone surgery, but we don't know if more surgeries will be needed. So aside from all these physical trauma that the patient Patients have also undergone. It will be a couple of weeks, a couple of months before they can actually determine whether or not they are well enough to go home and also psychological impact on them on how they are going to be able to recover from this very tragic or rather very extreme incident they've been through. After the doctor left, so uh, they, are, they are very serious and then the, the emotion is... Uh, I think the, the wife emotion collapsed because uh, the doctor actually told them uh, you have to go through the 
spine operation, but uh, it will harm the baby. I mean, that's a risk. So either you choose the baby or the, the, the adults. Uh, it's like, what is this? So from there, we start to seek for others' professional option. What is important is the post-recovery period. Um, I think um, some of them are still traumatized by the um, uh, incident. Um, uh, of course, um, that will take time so that uh, the, the whole recovery process would also include the, the counseling and, and the psychologist uh, to come in and, and give the, um, uh, you know, the, the care to. Um, so we hope that, um, uh, you know, uh, all in all, uh, they will physically and, and also, uh, you know, uh, they recover also emotionally through. It's quite hard listening to those stories, but perhaps one optimistic note is that today the data from the flight recorder has been recovered. Uh, what else do we know about the investigations? At the moment, not a whole lot, simply because this is going to take some time. Aside from the flight data recorder, cockpit voice recorder that the investigators will have to go through, they'll also have to study the structure of the plane in detail in order to find out whether or not it was the plane at fault or whether or not it was the weather that caused this accident. But beyond the investigation, there are other things that the victims are considering. How long will they have to stay in hospital? How much of a time will they not be able to work throughout this entire period? And thereafter, as well, we are talking about the post recovery where we are talking about potentially a long term physiotherapy, perhaps. And also, therein lies this compensation issue where a lot of the victims will be starting to consider going forward because if they're out of a job, they have families to take care of, and also they've got bills to pay. And this is another aspect that they're concerned about. Flying home is also yet another issue that they will have to deal with because after going through such a traumatic incident, they will have a little bit of fear in getting back onto the plane. They may consider on how they want to get back to their final destination later on. But at this point in time, it's still all about the recovery, all about the rehabilitation, and also all about the safety in terms of after coming out of the surgery. So we will definitely still continue to keep an eye on this because the victims as well as their families will also be extremely, extremely worried because at the end of the day, it's all about lives here. Yeah, indeed. Uh, May a long road ahead, it sounds like. Uh, thank you, May Wong, reporting live from Bangkok.